So this is the female pelvis and it is much wider than a man's pelvis for obvious reasons. And the reason I like to show you the pelvis and to demonstrate kind of how the baby moves through the pelvis is it helps to really kind of understand why it's important to be active in your labor, to be upright, to be forward, to be over. And the pelvis is made up of kind of bones and ligaments and joints. And there are kind of four main ones of each. So bones, you've got your hip bones here, which is if you kind of feel here, you'll feel those hip bones. Then you've got your pubic bone, which is the bone that goes across the front. You have your sit bones, which is the bony bit you can feel when you sit down. And then you have your sacrum, this bit here, this triangle, which is shaped a bit like a slide, really. Um, people often say that children love slides because this is the first one that they go on when they are born. And this ends with the coccyx at the bottom, which again, you can see is moving. So they're the main bones. And then the main joints, the main ligaments. So you have this one here, which is your pubic symphysis. You have your sacroiliac. So these are what enable the sacrum to move. And then you've got the joint here between the coccyx and the sacrum. And that means that the coccyx can move backwards and forwards. So what happens uh, towards the end of pregnancy is that you get a big burst of a hormone called relaxin. And that basically means that all of these ligaments, these joints, everything starts to soften so it can move. So this, for example, the pubic, pubic symphysis, this gray bit at the front, that can widen and soften by up to about nine millimeters, which is pretty significant when you are going to be having a baby. So this is your pelvis. Now, the widest part of the pelvis in the pelvic inlet, this is the top bit, is side to side. The pelvic outlet, which is where the baby will come out, the widest part of that is front to back. So, you have your pelvis, we have our baby. So, the baby enters the pelvis through the pelvic inlet, and it's wi the widest part of the baby's head is front to back. So the kind of optimal sort of fetal position for the baby to be in at the start of labor is head down, probably spine to the left. And baby will normally have their tip chin sort of tucked in. So they enter, and obviously this would take a lot longer, but I'm gonna do a speeded up version. So baby enters the pelvic inlet and once you are releasing all that lovely oxytocin and you're having those uterine contractions, the baby's head will enter and will slowly, slowly with each contraction be pushed further and further down, coming down, coming down. At some point, the baby's head will hit the pelvic floor. That's my hand now being the pelvic floor. Baby will then rotate so talking about being in different positions because the baby needs to move around. When the baby gets to the pelvic floor, it will turn. So its head is now kind of facing back. And as the contractions, as the surges continue, see I try to say surge and I still say contraction sometimes, baby's head will push further and further down and eventually the baby's head will come under the pubic arch. Slowly here, the baby's head will start to crown and that is the process of the head being born. So it comes through the perineum. When the baby's head is born, there is often a moment, a pause, where the baby then rotates. So its shoulders are now in the widest part of the pelvic outlet. So when the baby's head is out, there is a moment before the next surge when you can feel the baby's head or you can look with the mirror at the baby's head. And then with the next surge, baby will be born and brought up to mum, straight onto mum's chest for first eye contact. So we are gonna have a feel of our own pelvises now. Um, so I'd like you to get up out of your chair, get off of your sofa. So standing up and once you're up, have your legs at kind of hip width, 
and then bring your hands onto your hip bones. So these bits and just take some circles. Just feel the pelvis moving, thinking about what I've just shown you. Feel those kind of different shapes being made. And then I want you to bring one hand onto your pubic bone. So the bit across here, one hand onto your pubic bone and then one hand onto your sacrum. So it's always a little bit further down than what most people think it is. And then when you are here, you're going to just move. So just kind of leaning forward, almost sort of slightly scooping. And then as you come forward, bring your attention to the sacrum. Notice as you're leaning forward, how it moves back. And you are creating more space in your pelvis when you do that. And then if you come forward, almost like you would be lying down essentially, it closes the pelvis. So when you're upright, when you're forward, when you're over, you actually get 30% more space in your pelvis. If you're lying on your back, the sacrum can't move, the ligaments, the joints, nothing can move. Everything is much more rigid. You've got much less space in there. So 30% more space is created when you're up, forward and over. You can sit back down now. <laughs> 